Wormwood! I am very pleased by what you tell me about this man's relations with his mother, but you must press your advantage. The enemy will be working from the center outwards, gradually bringing more and more of the patient's conduct under the new standard. He may reach the behavior towards the old lady at any moment. You want to get in first. Keep in close contact with our colleague Glubos, who is in charge of the mother. You want to be building up in that household a mutual air of annoyance and daily pinpricks. The following methods are useful. Keep his mind on the inner life. He thinks his conversion is something that has happened inside him, and so at present is mostly concerned with the states of his own mind, or rather, that very sanitized set of them which you should allow him to see. Encourage this. You can keep his mind off the most elementary duties by directing it towards the most advanced and spiritual ones, aggravating him that most useful human characteristic, the horror and neglect of the obvious. You must bring him to a condition where he can practice self-examination for an hour without discovering those most rudimentary facts about himself which are obvious to anyone who has lived with him or worked in the same office. It is no doubt impossible to keep him from praying for his mother. However, we have methods of rendering the prayers innocuous. Keep them always very spiritual, so that he is more concerned with the state of her soul than the state of her rheumatism. Two key advantages will follow. In the first place, his attention will be kept on anything he regards as her sins, which, with a little guidance from you, he can think of as anything that he finds annoying or inconvenient in her behavior. In this way, you can rub the wounds of the day a little sorer, even while he is on his knees. The process is not at all difficult, and you will find it very entertaining. In the second place, since his ideas about her soul will be very crude and often erroneous, he will be praying less for his real mother and more for an imagined one. It will be your job to every day make this person less and less like the real mother, the sharp-tongued old lady at the breakfast table. In time, you may get the divide so wide that none of the feelings that he gets from his prayers for the imagined mother will ever flow over into his treatment for the real one. I have had several patients so well in hand that they could be turned immediately from the impassioned prayer for their wife and son to the immediate beating of that same wife and son, without a qualm. When two humans have lived together for many years, it usually happens that each has expressions of face and tones of voice that are unendurably irritating to the other. Work on that. Bring fully into your patient's consciousness that particular lift of his mother's eyebrows which he learned to dislike in the nursery, and let him think how much he dislikes it. Let him assume that she knows it annoys him, and that she does it to annoy. If you know your job, he will never realize the improbability of this assumption. And also, never let him suspect that he has any faces or tones which are annoying to others himself. As he cannot see or hear himself, this is easily managed. In civilized life, domestic hatred usually expresses itself by saying things which would appear completely harmless on paper, the words themselves are not offensive, but in such a tone or at such a time that it is nothing short of a slap in the face. To keep this up, you and Glubos must make sure that the two fools have something of a double standard. Your patient must demand that everything he says be taken at face value of just the words themselves while simultaneously judging everything that his mother says through an oversensitive interpretation of her tone and her context and her perceived intention. She must do the same to him. This way they can go away from every fight being convinced or nearly convinced that they are quite innocent. You know the kind of thing. I only ask her what time dinner will be and she flies into a temper. Once this habit is clearly established, you will have the delightful situation of a human saying things which they intend to cause offense, but when offense is taken, finding a grievance themselves. Finally, tell me something of the old lady's religious position. Is she at all jealous of the new factor in her son's life? Is she at all miffed that he has learned later in life from others what she feels she gave him a great opportunity to learn in childhood? Or perhaps she feels that he is making too big a fuss of the whole thing? Or perhaps that he's getting in too easily? Remember the older brother from the enemy's story. 